Well, good morning, my friends, and welcome back to our Bible study. I hope you had an awesome day yesterday in the house of the Lord or watching it on uh, on uh, Facebook or wherever you may have been. I hope it was a blessed day for you. Today, we're going to get back in our Bible study, and our Bible study is um, is going to the book of Nehemiah, the book of Nehemiah. Now, a couple of things I want to share with you before we... I get into some scriptures this morning. Uh, Ezra and Nehemiah in the Hebrew scriptures was one book. And so if you had that one book, you would see that all three of the returns from exiles would have been in the Hebrew scriptures in one book. Uh, and, um, Ezra and Nehemiah lived at the same time. And uh, Nehemiah actually served under Artaxerxes, and uh, he was the cupbearer for Artaxerxes in a high position there. And so um, uh, he, I'm sure, uh, gave uh, a lot of encouragement and support uh, for Ezra going back. Uh, uh, he was, um, uh, if, if you remember yesterday, or day before, Saturday, I'm sorry, if you remember, we talked about Mordecai, uh, no doubt was influential in the uh, in the returns, the future returns that were to come back and supporting Ezra. Well, I believe also Nehemiah was because he served under the same uh, Xerxes that um, that uh, supported Ezra in returning to Jerusalem. Now, while Zerubbabel returned to build the temple, and we told you 60 years later, Ezra came back to teach the people the ways of God. Nehemiah 12 years later, went to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. So today, I just want to kind of read some scriptures and highlight a few things for you uh, this morning. We want to go to Nehemiah chapter number one. I want to begin reading in verse number two. And uh, Hananiah, one of my brothers, came with certain men from Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews who escaped, who had survived the exile, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said to me, the remnant there in the province who had survived the exile is in great trouble and shame. And here's the uh, what uh, really stirred uh, Nehemiah. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down, and its gates are destroyed by fire. And so Nehemiah went to prayer, and he prayed in verse number 10, they are your servants and your people whom you have redeemed by your great power and by your strong hand. O Lord, verse 11, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servant, uh, of your servants who delight to fear your name and give success to your servant today and grant him mercy in the sight of uh, uh, this man. Uh, and then he goes on and says, I was the cupbearer to the king. I want to look at chapter 2, verses 4 or 5. I'm just going to hit some scriptures here, and then I want to uh, give you a, a couple of principles. But in verse 19 and 20 of chapter number 2, it says, But when Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the Ammonite served at, uh, serve it, and Geshem the Arab heard of it, they jeered at us, and this is um, after they're starting to build, and despised us and said, What is this thing that you're doing? Are you rebelling against the king? Then I replied to him, them, The God of heaven will make us prosper, and we his servants will arise and build, but you have no portion or right or claim in Jerusalem. It's just like the enemy again. When uh, Zerubbabel went in to build the temple, he got opposition, and so did Nehemiah. And Nehemiah looks at them and says, you have no right to do this. And I can tell you, once again, my friends, you and I can stand up to evil, to those that are opposing the work of God, and say, you have no right. We can rebuke the devil. And uh, I, I realized that these were mere men, but the enemy was working through them to try to hinder the work of the Lord. We go on over to chapter number four, verses one to three. The same uh, men. Now, when Sam Ballot heard we were building the wall, he was angry and greatly enraged, and he jeered at the Jews. And he said in the presence of his brothers and of the army of Samaria, what are these feeble Jews doing? Will they restore it for themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they finish it up in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of rubbish and burn uh, the burned ones at that? Tobiah the Ammonite was uh, uh, beside him and said, Yes, what they are building, if a fox goes up on it, he will break down their stone walls. Uh, 
And so uh, we see again, they're mocking them. They're telling them it's not going to come to pass. And there's discouraging Nehemiah. I'm just thinking, my friends, in life again. And I know I've already said this on one occasion in an earlier devotion. But I can tell you, when you're in the will of God and when you start to fulfill the things that he's called you to do, there's going to be people that will discourage you. There will people that be a people that will attack you. And we're not through with Nehemiah yet. If we go over to chapter number six, uh, five times here, there were uh, letters that were sent, five letters that were sent. You ever had some things that came in the mail and they weren't too good? I want to tell you, I bet uh, Nehemiah wasn't anxious to look in his mailbox. Uh, five times that letters came from Sanballat and Tobiah, uh, and they were trying to discourage him and even making threats to harm him. <clears throat> And in chapter number 6, verses 12 and 13, not only did they send letters, uh, threatening letters to him, but they hired false prophets. Uh, and, and we look here in verses 13 and 14, for this purpose he was hired, this was a false prophet, that I should be afraid and act in this way and sin. And so they could give me a bad name in order to taunt me. Remember Tobiah and Sanballat, oh my God, according to these things that they did. And also the prophetess, Noadiah, and the rest of the prophets who wanted to make me afraid. So there was obviously more than just one prophet. There was a prophetess, uh, pro uh, at least a prophetess, uh, a female prophet, and also, um, uh, more prophets. It uses the word plural there, all to make him afraid. And then in verse number 19, once again, uh, they spoke of his, uh, uh, and Tobiah, the last phrase there in verse uh, uh, chapter 6, verse 19, and Tobiah sent letters to make me afraid. You see, fear is the opposite of faith. And Nehemiah, he believed. He believed it could be done. And um, these men were trying to put fear in his heart, just like the enemy does. Now, another thing we look at in verses 15 and 16, it said that the wall was finished in 52 days. It was finished in 52 days. Now, that's if we could think about the walls of a city of Jerusalem being put up. And you know how it was done in chapter number 3. And I want to close with this. In chapter number 3, it, it tells all the people that would take sections of the wall and build their section. And then another person, and it's kind of uh, in chapter number three, you know, you, all these names, we don't know who they all are, but it tells the name and their family. And they did this and they did that. And in building the walls in 52 days, it was done. And I began to think about this, um, about many hands. I've heard this. You've heard this. Many hands make light work. And so we see this coming together, this unity. And can I tell you, my friends, I believe it's time for the church in America to come together, to begin to pray together, to begin to, uh, to worship together. Uh, many hands. We've got to build up the walls uh, uh, against the enemy that's trying to come in. And if we as the church, it's our responsibility to come together. I've seen storms that have come through, tornadoes, hurricanes, and I've seen people jump in and they work together. Didn't matter what color you were. Didn't matter what denomination you were. They all came together and they got the work done. And I'm going to tell you, if the enemy wants to keep us from doing that, the enemy wants to keep us from coming together and and praying together and worshiping together if we'll do that see that's where he becomes fearful in fact i didn't read it this morning but what happens is is that when they came together and they got the work done sanballat and tobiah and the enemies became fearful well the thing they were trying to do to nehemiah is put fear in him but what happened was when the work was done they were the ones that were fearful i can tell you my friends that uh, we can put fear in the devil. We can put fear in the enemies of God. If we come together, united we stand, divided we fall. And that's, that goes, we've heard that expression for our nation, and it's true.
true. But I can tell you uh, that it's true also for the church. It's true for the people of God. If we will unify, there's power in unity. And if we will just unify and forget about the little piddly things that we don't agree with, I don't agree with that. If we'll come and we'll magnify the name of God and we'll worship Him and we'll just come together just like they did in Nehemiah's day in rebuilding that wall. We can build the wall of defense if we'll come together. Father, I pray for the people today. I pray, God, you will help them through this day. And, Lord, I pray that we won't get our eyes on our differences, Lord, different beliefs and, and, and other things that would try to divide us. But, God, I pray that we can just come together and join together and pray. Pray for our nation. Pray for our souls and our families. Uh, uh, intercede, oh, God. May we join together for that we realize there's power in unity. And I just pray for our people today. Give them a great day in the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I hope you have a great Monday. And we'll come back tomorrow and we'll finish up the book of Nehemiah. God bless you. Bye-bye.